Hey, Pastor Steve Aldrin, I hope you're having an incredible day or night in Jesus. Thank you for being with us today. We're in Titus Kennedy's wonderful book, Excavating the Evidence for Jesus. And I'm going to give you three ancient sources that prove Jesus Christ. So let's get started. Thanks for being here. So first of all, he brings Lucian of Samosata. The first two of these sources were actually anti-Christians. But let's see what they have to say about Jesus. So Lucian of Samosata, very early, 2nd century, 125 to 180 AD, said this, he learned the wondrous lore of the Christians by associating with their priests and scribes in Palestina. They still worship the man who was crucified in Palestina because he introduced this new cult into the world. Now notice what he admits in the second century, that Jesus is being worshipped. Jesus, just like Pliny the Younger, Jesus is being worshipped. They still worship the man who was crucified. Notice this, he was crucified in Palestine. Enemies speaking about them. And he started a new cult, new religion. Denying the Greek gods, they were monotheists. And by worshiping that crucified sophist, again emphasizing he was crucified, sophist, he was a teacher, wisdom, Jesus Christ, our wisdom, our righteousness, sanctification, redemption, 1 Corinthians 1 30, himself, and living under his laws. He gave us epistles, he gave us teachings, he gave us moral law. So you can see what in the day, 1900 years ago, was meant as a slam, now proves the existence of the one he was trying to destroy. Now, let's go to Celsus. This is somebody that Origen, I'm not a big fan of Origen, very brilliant, I've read a lot of Origen, Origen Adamentius, AD 120 to AD 190. So, this is Celsius talking, for he represents him disputing with Jesus and confuting him as he thinks on many points and in the first place, he accuses him of having invented his birth from a virgin. So he admits the virgin birth. And it braids him with being born in a certain Jewish village. Virgin born, certain Jewish village. It wasn't Jerusalem, it was just a village. Of a poor woman, Mary, of the country, who gained her substance by spinning. Now that's fascinating. That was an ancient tradition that she was like a seamstress by spinning and who was turned out of doors by her husband we know the nuance there of Matthew chapter 1 didn't do it uh, a carpenter by trade so Mary's husband was a carpenter just like the Bible said their enemies while they were trying to slam now prove Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, because she was convicted of adultery, again showing the virgin birth, but not convicted of adultery. This is hearsay that after being driven away uh, by her husband and wandering about for a time, she disgracefully gave birth to Jesus. Now, I think that's kind of wandering around for the time, maybe going from Nazareth to Bethlehem, but obviously she wasn't separated from Joseph. So Jesus, an illegitimate child, who having hired himself out as a servant in Egypt, notice he knew of the Egyptian sword. It all gets convoluted, just as myths do. That's proven by historical methodology that things don't get closer to the truth over time. They're lost to truth over time. They get, and this is where mythology comes from. This is like the Sumerian king list, on and on and so forth. On account of his poverty and having there acquired some miraculous powers, he's admitting Jesus was doing miracles on which the Egyptians greatly pride themselves, returned to his own country, highly elated on account of them, and by means of these proclaimed himself a God. So he did miracles and said he was a God. He claimed to be God. You see all the things, virgin birth, Joseph a carpenter, all of these things. All right, and that's in origin, quoting Celsius, the true word, AD 176, and contra Celsius 128. The last one is Thallus, and he's writing about AD 50, 50 AD, and he says this, on the whole world, there pressed a fearful darkness. 
wow, it wasn't because you can't have an eclipse at Passover. And it wasn't just in Jerusalem, it was the whole world. And the rocks were rent by an earthquake. Darkness, fearful darkness, and an earthquake. And many places in Judea and other districts were thrown down. Thallus calls this darkness an eclipse of the sun in his third book of histories. Without reason, it seems to me, for the Hebrews celebrate the Passover on the 14th day according to the moon. And the passion of our Savior falls on the day before the Passover, but an eclipse of the sun takes place only when the moon comes under the sun. This is Thallus recorded in Julius Sextus Africanus, AD 220. But he's quoting Thallus. He had a copy, 50 AD. He's quoting 220 AD. That's another thing you have to realize in studying history. A lot of times they had resources that are now lost to history. That's one of the difficult things in doing biblical textual studies is there may be millions, and there are millions of manuscripts that used to be extant that people had access to. We no longer have access to because of wars, because of burnings, because of persecutions, because of earthquakes, because of natural disasters, floods, these type things. Or just the ravages of time. So, Celsus, Thallus, and Lucian of Samoseta, Jesus lived. He was God Almighty. We all need to serve him. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye.